Hello, my name is Dennis, and welcome to my Trailer Park White Trash Mobile Home Kitchen. I really do live in a mobile home, in a trailer park, and this is my kitchen. I'm going to do something a little bit unusual and kind of fancy today. I'm going to roast boneless chicken. This is a kind of a strange treat. This is something you would bring to the table on a special occasion, and people are going to look at it and go, oh, okay, what is that? Because it kind of looks a little bit different, but then you start slicing it like you would slice a loaf of bread. And from one end, it's white meat. From the other end, it's dark meat. And within each slice, there's a generous portion of stuffing. I saw Julia Child do a boneless chicken in one of her French chef videos, and she made it look like it's a lot of work. I'm actually going to do it a lot more easily. I'm hoping this is actually the first time I've done this, so I don't know how it's going to come out, but it should be a fun experiment. So today we're going to do stuffed, roasted, boneless chicken. So let's get into our ingredients. I've got a six pound chicken here, whole, in one of my videos and on in a PDF on the website, I believe it's in the on the basics page now. I show you how to debone a chicken. I'm not going to show you that whole process here because I'm going to try to keep this video down to 15 minutes for YouTube. So refer to that video as far as getting the meat off the bones. And then I have three cups of homemade chicken stock. If you want, you can use the chicken broth that comes in a a package. I like this as well. I just happen to have a lot of chicken stock. This is what I do with the bones and all the trim from the chickens. I make stock out of it. So, and then I store it, I freeze it in one cup portions and then pop them out of the cups and store them in a Ziploc bag so I know that I have exactly three cups here. I like to use bagels for stuffing. They're denser, they give, I think, a more of an al dente texture to the stuffing. I'm using four bagels. It only takes two to fill a chicken, but I'm going, to, I'm going to be making a double portion of stuffing because you can never have enough stuffing. I have a one pound chub of pork sausage meat. This is sage flavored. I just grabbed it from the store. I have about a dozen fresh sage leaves. If you want to use sage from a spice jar, that's fine. I like to use fresh sage. And then I have about two tablespoons here of fresh chopped Italian parsley. I'm going to use one whole medium sized onion and then salt and pepper to taste. So those are the ingredients for my stuffing for my chicken. Next I'm going to start prepping my chicken. Again I have about a six pound chicken here. I changed cutting boards because I have one board that I call my chicken board. I only use it for chicken. If you don't know this trick, put a rubber mat down under your, your cutting board while you're working so that the board doesn't slide around. It'll make it more solid and safer to work with. To start my chicken, I don't need these two pieces of the wing, the wing tip and this middle piece. I forget what that's called, but I'm going to leave the drumette, this bottom piece, on for the time being. So I'm going to cut down through the joint and remove the wing pieces. Leave the drumette on and then I'm going to do one cut down the back of the chicken to cut through the skin. And then I'm going to start working this skin off. This is what's going to make my chicken look like a chicken. All right. This is where that wing is attached. And I'm just going to cut down to the joint of the wing and cut down through that joint. And then I'm just going to pull the wing out as soon as I get this free, almost there. Just going to pull the swing out because I want to leave the skin behind. There's our drumette out, and there's my bit of 
skin from the drumette. I'm going to dry my hands here. I like to keep one hand dry. The hand that's holding the knife so that I know it can't slip in my hands. Again, working the skin off. This is this is the part of the chicken where the skin attaches most securely along the back. Okay, and then go in here again and expose that joint. Cut down through the joint. Okay, now I'm going to remove the legs. I know where the legs attach here along the back. And I have one joint right here. Just working this leg to find that joint. I don't care how nice the meat looks at this point because it's all going to be put back inside. I just want to cut through the joint, pop it, and then separate the meat, being careful not to cut the skin. Along the back of the thigh is where the skin attaches securely. So I'm just going to cut through the skin there. Not the skin. Cut underneath the skin to separate it. I don't want to cut through the skin. Once I get the back of the thigh cleared, then I can just pull the skin right off the leg meat. So there's my skin for my leg. Same thing on this side. the joint, cut through it, and then separate the remainder of the thigh meat. Again, being careful not to cut through the skin. And then finishing the, separating the skin from the back of the thigh. And that's ready to pull out. Okay. The last step is to take the skin off the rest of the bird. Again, I want to dry my hands. This part goes pretty pretty quickly because it isn't adhered real strongly along the breast meat. Right along the center of the breast there's some connective tissue that's pretty easy to cut through. Again, I'm not trying to make the meat look real pretty, so if I make some cut marks in the meat, I just don't care because the meat's going to go back inside the skin. It's the skin that I want to keep all in one piece. Almost there. All right, and there's my entire piece of skin. Doesn't look like much now, but it will in a moment. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to fillet off all this meat from my legs 
and the breast meat. Again, I've got a video that shows how to do that, so I'm not going to take time now to do it in this video. I've finished filleting off the chicken meat. Here's my two breast pieces, my two drumstick pieces, and my two thigh pieces. Again, there's a video on the website that shows you how to do that and a PDF you can download. My next step is I want to start assembling my stuffing. My first step here is to dry out my bagels. I'm using two different kinds of bagels. I've got a sesame seed, a pair of sesame seed bagels, and then a pair of plain bagels. You can mix up the flavors as you want. It's just going to add more interest and more texture to your stuffing. I slice each of these into three slices. And then cube them. like so. And then I'm going to put all of these pieces on a cookie sheet and put them in a 275 degree oven for about 30 to 45 minutes to just really dry them out and crisp them up to improve the texture of my stuffing. My first step here is to start preparing my ingredients for my stuffing. I have my frozen stock thawing over low heat in a wonderful ceramic saucepan that my good friend Marilyn gave me. I like this because Julia Child used it in one of her videos, at least one. I have a skillet heating. I'm going to put some olive oil in the bottom. I think you can use regular cooking oil, corn oil, or whatever for this first step. And then I'm going to open my chub of pork sausage. And just put this in my pan. I'm going to break this up and cook this until it's cooked. It doesn't need to be browned, but I want to get this thoroughly cooked. My sausage meat is cooked. I'm just going to leave the fat in the pan and now I'm going to cook my onions in the same skillet. The sausage meat only took about, I don't know, five or six minutes. Again, I didn't want to brown it. I just want to get it cooked. And then the onions, I chopped my onion and I'm just going to cook this until it's translucent. I don't need to caramelize these onions just want to get them cooked until they're soft and translucent. Probably about, I'd say, five to six minutes over high heat. My onions have finished cooking. So these are light, lightly cooked, translucent. It's run about six minutes. That brown color you see is not because the onions were caramelized. That's the fond the brown bits that were left over from cooking the sausage meat. That's why I wanted to cook the onions after the sausage meat so that it could bring in that flavor with the onions. Now I'm ready to start working with the bread crumb, the bread, uh, the base, base, blah, bagel bits. Here are my bagel pieces dried from the in the oven and I've allowed them to cool off a little bit. They're nice and crisp. So they're fine. This is my melted chicken stock. Again from my friend Marilyn who gave me this wonderful ceramic saucepan. If all clad wanted to send me their best set of pots and pans, I'd feature them in my videos as well. Now this has to sit for a little bit to allow the bread to absorb the moisture. I just look to see that there's no more moisture at the bottom of the bowl and then I know it's moist enough. It's going to absorb more moisture in the oven when it's baking inside of the chicken. So after, after I let this sit for a little bit, I'm going to start assembling my stuffing to go into my boneless chicken. I've stirred my bagel pieces couple of times and I'm satisfied that there's no moisture in the bottom. So I'm going to start adding my onions. 
my cooked sausage meat. This stuff is good. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. This is my chopped Italian parsley and I chopped my sage leaves. I'm going to put maybe, I don't know, half a teaspoon of salt in there and some fresh ground pepper. That should be plenty. And then start mixing this up. Actually, I'm going to do this the way I like to do it. Get my hands in there. I can use this, the bowl of one spoon or five fingers. This is just a more efficient way to do this. All right. I want to taste this for salt. There's all cooked liquid in here and cooked ingredients, so I don't have to worry about raw ingredients in my mouth. Let me just see how this tastes for salt. That's good. It's lightly salted. It's not strong. I don't want a lot of, I don't like a strong flavor of salt in my food. So now I'm ready to start assembling my chicken and putting the stuffing in. Okay, here's where the adventure begins. I've had my chicken meat wrapped and stored in the refrigerator while I was preparing my stuffing. I'm going to use a skewer here to hold this all together if all goes well. So here is my chicken meat. I'm looking for, that's where the legs are. So this would be the breast section up here. Got a little hole in it right there. All right, let's see if I can do this. Here is a piece of drumstick. And that's drumstick meat there. Just pushing this down to the end so it doesn't quite come out the end. And then this is the thigh meat that goes in there. And the thigh meat that packs in there. And then finally up here are two breast pieces. Like so. Okay, let me wipe my hands. And here's my stuffing. If I can make this work. Put in a generous portion of stuffing in the middle. I'm not going to be able to put all this in because, again, I made, I used four bagels rather than two. So this, the leftover stuffing is going to go into a casserole dish and be baked. Again, wipe my hands. And then starting at the end here using a skewer. I'm going to try to stitch this skin together. The idea of using a skewer here is that when this is baked I can just slide this right out so that it'll be easy to slice the chicken. This is going to look like a strange bird once it's all assembled.
Okay. So there's my skewer in place. Turn this over. <laughs> and I don't care about the, the, the ends being open because I know the stuffing is going to expand a little bit and I don't care if it comes out the end because I don't want it to tear the skin. I am going to tie this up with poultry, I mean with uh, kitchen twine, just to kind of hold it into a nicer shape. And then that'll go into the roasting pan. Again, my leftover stuffing will go into a second casserole dish. As I mentioned at the outset, you can't have enough stuffing. So let's get this tied next. My main reason for tying this right now is to get this, these back legs secured in. My meat is poking out a little bit here. And this will hold those legs in place so that the meat won't expand out. I'm going to put one in the front. Hold those, hold the breast meat up. And then finally one more in the middle. And mostly what I'm concerned with here, oh, I got caught on the skewer, is again, I want to pull the thigh meat in. This one I'm going to pull kind of tight. Okay. And there it is. There's our boneless stuffed chicken. I know that's a weird looking bird, but once it's cooked, I'm going to be able to just slice through that. And in the front will be areas of white meat with stuffing. In the back where the drumstick and the thigh meat is, this will be dark meat with stuffing. So I have my onion, I have my oven rather, heating to 350 degrees. I'm going to bake this with a probe in the stuffing. I want to roast it to a stuffing temperature of about 160 degrees. When I bring it out of the oven and let it rest for 10 to 15 minutes, the stuffing will continue to come up in temperature as the heat continues to migrate inside. You want to get the stuffing to about 165, 168 degrees. That's when it becomes safe. So that's, that's the temperature that I'm aiming for. I'm imagining this is probably going to cook to 60 to 90 minutes, I'm guessing, to bring that temperature up to about 160, 165. Hear that? My roast chicken has reached 160 degrees. Turn off the alarm. And then bring this out of the oven. Oh, look at that. There is our chicken. So I'm going to let this rest now for about 15, 20 minutes. And that should come up to a temperature of maybe 165 to 170, which is a safe temperature. And I can start carving this. This will be the light meat. This will be the dark meat. My chicken has been sitting. It has come up to already 171 degrees. So I know this is safe to eat. I take the probe out. 
and now I want to take this skewer out. This should just slide right out. Yep, there's the skewer. Little piece of stuffing for me. And now let's see how this carves. This is the dark meat part of the chicken. A little bit messy there, but there's dark meat and stuffing. And this is the light meat part of the chicken. Oh, look at that. So there you've got a nice portion of white meat with stuffing inside. You can take the string out. And there's a portion of dark meat with stuffing inside. Boneless stuffed chicken. What more could you ask for other than to sit down and eat, which is what I'm going to do next. What I want to test here is I want to test for moisture because a challenge when making roast stuffed chicken is that to get the, the, the filling, the stuffing to a safe temperature, 168, 170 degrees, this was fine. Have the dark meat thoroughly cooked all the way through and still have the white meat be moist. And I could tell when I carved it that this white meat, white meat is going to be moist, so I'm going to check it here. Oh yeah. That's melt in your mouth, moist. Taste the stuffing here. Oh, mm, that's good. And a little piece of my dark meat. Mmm. All right. I'm ready to sit down to a feast. So I'm going to go have my dinner. For a printable PDF copy of this recipe with step-by-step -step photographs, visit the White Trash Cooking website and look on the home page or in the recipe archive.